off this countdown, we have the infamous Bigfoot. This footage of Bigfoot is the one that started this whole Bigfoot craze. If you Google images of Bigfoot, this is surely the one to pop up. So back in 1967, two men were creating a short film in Northern California when they ended up capturing footage of Bigfoot. In the footage, we see him walk by a wooded area. Over the years, a number of people have attempted to debunk this footage but none have been successful. Is it possible for it to be someone in a gorilla suit? Well, at the time this footage came out, the movie Beneath the Planet of the Apes also came out. If you look at the ape costumes used in that movie and compare it to the Bigfoot video, Bigfoot looks more realistic. People claim you can actually see the creature's muscles and such. How could someone make a costume way above its time? It's not possible. Meaning, this could be evidence of a real Bigfoot. Coming in at number 9, we have Provo Canyon Bigfoot. In October of 2012, a group of siblings were hiking in Provo Canyon when they spotted something in the woods and began filming it. Earlier on their hike, they saw some deer and wanted to get a closer look at them, so they headed up in the direction of the deer. That's when they spotted this creature. At first, they thought it was a bear, but were horrified when the creature stood up on its two legs. They got frightened and ran out of the area. To this day, they don't know exactly what it is that they saw, but they managed to capture it on tape. Yeah, we probably should stick close to it, huh? How cool is that? Let's go. Moving on at number eight, we have Algany National Forest. In 2007, hunter Rick Jacobs decided to mount a wildlife camera to a tree in Algany National Forest, Pennsylvania. The camera worked on a motion sensor and would take photos when triggered. He had hopes of capturing photos of bears, deers, and other wildlife. Little did he know that he was about to capture evidence of Bigfoot. So on September 16th, 2007, upon reviewing the photos on the camera, he discovered a creepy picture of what appears to be Bigfoot. However, skeptics believe that it's an image of a sick bear. But the way that it's hunched over with its back leg extended makes it look like Bigfoot. In our seventh spot, we have Marble Mountain Bigfoot. If you are a Bigfoot enthusiast, then this is another well-known sighting to you. In June of 2001, a group of teens and a leader, part of a youth group called Campus Life, were camping at Marble Mountain. The group ended up finding a weird den made out of twigs and large branches. Then shortly after, the leader, Jim Mills, noticed a weird looking creature moving nearby. He filmed it for seven minutes. To this day, this is the longest video footage of an alleged Bigfoot sighting. Experts have analyzed the footage and have agreed that it's not a human and that the creature is nine feet tall. When the Bigfoot noticed the group of people watching it, it began jumping up and down, screaming, and then it pushes a tree. It was just probably trying to scare off the onlookers. Making our way down the list at number six, we have Lake James Bigfoot. Back in late 2019, a man named John Bruner and three other men went on a boat late at night scouting an area on Lake James. Apparently that night, fishermen had seen something watching them from the shore, so these folks went out to investigate. That's when they started to hear weird noises coming from the cove. They turned off the boat's motor and used their night vision cameras to scope out the area. That's when they saw Bigfoot and got 121 pictures of it. The creature was estimated to be around seven and a half feet tall. At one point, they claimed that the creature was just standing, swaying back and forth while watching them. After five minutes, the creature walked away. But again, like all photos of Bigfoot, these photos are terribly blurry. All 121 of them. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with webcam Bigfoot. Bigfoot just keeps blowing its cover. Now it seems like he doesn't care if he gets caught. Also, so let me say that Washington state is notorious for Bigfoot sightings. There have been tons of sightings over the years, so Bigfoot must have a home somewhere around there. Anyways, this time Bigfoot was caught on the Department of Transportation's webcam. The webcam was located on Sherman Pass on State Route 20. It caught Bigfoot crossing a mountain pass. Then you see it lurking behind some trees by the road. Whatever it is, it looks massive and hairy just like Bigfoot.
In our fourth spot, we have the Russian Bigfoot. Bigfoot is said to mainly live in Canada and in areas of the US, but this video may prove that Russia is also home to Bigfoots. So this footage was shot back in 2016 and features Bigfoot chasing a car. In this video, you can see a black blob appear in the distance only to then start coming closer and closer to the car filming it. I mean, the creature moves pretty fast since it manages to catch up with the car, which keeps driving away from the creature and then stopping to get more footage of it. At one point in the video, the girls are yelling to close the window and can be heard saying, he's coming, he's running. Apparently, the creature actually jumped onto the car and broke the glass, but obviously they were not recording when that happened. Uh, so yeah. Apparently, Bigfoot in Russia are super aggressive. Also, is the plural of Bigfoot Big Feet or Bigfoots? I don't know. Big Feet. <laughs> third spot we have the curious children. In January of 2013, three Russian children were out playing in the snow when they stumbled upon Bigfoot. This case was actually featured on an episode of National Geographic. So the kids were out following a pair of footprints to the edge of a frozen lake. Along the way, they are laughing and joking around. That's when they see a tall, dark, hairy figure in the distance. When the creature spots them, it turns and runs away super fast. The kids get scared and run away as well. They described to National Geographic that the creature was tall and covered in hair, except it had no hair on its face. The children and their parents all believe that they spotted a real life Bigfoot. Coming in at number two, we have the game camera, another Bigfoot sighting in Washington state. In attempts to catch a supposed Bigfoot that had been lurking around the area, they set up a game camera hidden in a fake rock. They did this as a way to trick Bigfoot. The camera and rock were set up in a man's yard, who claimed he saw Bigfoot lurking there nine months earlier. Well, they did capture something all right. If you look at the photo, it just kind of looks like a blurry mess, not gonna lie. But they believe that it shows an eye with wrinkles above it, part of a nose bridge, part of another eye, and a forehead. In fact, this image matches the eyewitness drawing of the creature. The photo from the game camera was placed on top of the drawing and it lined up almost perfectly. Pretty creepy if you ask me. And in our number one spot, we have 911 Bigfoot. This next sighting is so creepy. A man calls 911 saying that a tall, dark figure is in his yard. In fact, the full actual call is online available to be listened to. So the call occurred in Washington state, AKA Bigfoot Central, back in 1996. The man on the phone tells the operator that someone or something is crawling in his yard. He says that his sensor light came on and he saw something run across the yard. When the operator asks him to describe it, he says that it's a good sized man or something that looks like a man. Then he says that the creature is about six foot eight and is really big. He also tells her that the night before his dog was killed in his yard. Then out of nowhere, he starts panicking, telling the operator to send someone immediately. A week later, the sheriff's office got a picture of what seems to be Bigfoot lurking in his neighbor's yard. Number 10. Bigfoot has been around for hundreds of years. Now, some people think this is just a new phenomenon that has been made up, but there have been Bigfoot sightings and reportings for hundreds of years. It first started in Canada as early as 1884 when the British colonists, a newspaper in Victoria, Canada, published an account of a gorilla type creature captured in the area. Other accounts followed, according to the Canadian Encyclopedia. Sasquatch book author John Green 
compiled a list of 1,340 sightings through the 19th and 20th centuries. Now, the fact that this has been around for years and years makes me question people's doubts. Number 9. Face to Face with the Beast Lawyer Matt Moneymaker lives in Dana Point in Southern California, and in his spare time, he leads the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization, which is a network of more than 3,000 people who claim to have seen the Sasquatch. In the woods of eastern Ohio, he claims he finally came eye to eye with it. He recounted this story, saying, It was 2 o'clock in the morning, and the moon was a quarter full. Suddenly, there he was, an 8 foot tall creature standing 15 feet away, growling at me. He wanted me to know that I was in the wrong place. Now, although he leads the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization, no one from the organization has been able to snap a clear picture of the beast. Everyone there has their own experience with Bigfoot, though. Number 8. Whitehall Trail In 1976, multiple witnesses, including local police and a New York State trooper, said they saw a man-like beast standing over 7 to 8 feet tall and covered with hair. A blurry photo was taken from a Whitehall Trail cam in 2010, and it is among hundreds of reported Bigfoot sightings across the state. Whitehall has its own Bigfoot event, the Sasquatch Calling Festival, with a competition for the best Bigfoot calls to attract the elusive animal. Bigfoot has reportedly been sighted in many other places, including Washington State in 2020, which kept the hope alive for the enthusiasts across the US. A Mayville, New York resident, Peter Weimer, told WGRZ that he's heard from 45 eyewitnesses who claim to have seen the Sasquatch in the area around Chautauqua Lake, located 60 miles south of Buffalo. There are a hundred or more witnesses in Chautauqua County that aren't talking to me, Peter told the TV station. Now, according to WGRZ, the county is packed with dense forests and deep gorges where a large animal could live but rarely be seen, like the black bear. Peter, who sponsors the animal Chautauqua Lake Bigfoot Expo event for believers and fans, says footprints seen in nearby Asheville, New York are further evidence that Sasquatch is out there. Number 7. Vocalizations Alleged vocalizations such as howls, screams, moans, grunts, whistles, and even a form of supposed language have been reported and allegedly recorded from Bigfoot. Some of these alleged vocalization recordings have been analyzed by individuals such as retired US Navy cryptologic linguistic Scott Nelson. He analyzed audio recordings from the early 1970s said to be recorded in the Sierra Nevada mountains dubbed the Sierra Sounds. When speaking about his findings, he said, It's definitely a language. It's definitely not in human origin, and it could not have been faked. So yeah, they have their own language we choose to ignore. Number six. Footprints. Investigator Jimmy Chilcutt of the Conroe Police Department in Texas, who specializes in finger and footprints, has analyzed more than 150 casts of big footprints that Meldrum, the Idaho State professor, keeps in a laboratory. Jim says one footprint found in 1987 in Walla Walla in Washington State has convinced him that Bigfoot is real. He said, The ridge flow pattern and the texture was completely different from anything I've seen. It certainly wasn't human and of no known primate that I've examined. The print ridges flowed lengthwise along the foot, unlike human prints which flow across. The texture of the ridges was about twice the thickness of a human, which indicated that this animal has a real thick skin. Now, number five, Bigfoot-like creature found. Showman Frank Hansen exhibited the Iceman, a Bigfoot-like creature encased in ice at the International Livestock Exposition in Chicago. This relic of the Ice Age was found in the waters off Siberia. In December 1968, Bernard Hillevmans of Royal Institute of Natural Sciences of Belgium examined the creature in a trailer in Minnesota. They said, We consider this to be a genuine and unique example of the most priceless specimen. In a scientific journal, Bernard declared that he discovered a new species of man. In April 1969, the Smithsonian appeared appealed to the FBI director J. Edgar Hoover for help. Hoover declined, citing the absence of a violation of a federal law within our investigation jurisdiction. It's reported that the US Customs would look into it, the body, after all it was supposedly imported. Meanwhile, Frank put a model of the specimen on display. Number 4. 
Bigfoot video. The most famous Bigfoot video is a short film taken in 1967 by Roger Patterson and Bob Gilman, known as the Patterson film. Shot in Bluff Creek, the video shows what appears to be a large and hairy bipedal ape or Bigfoot striding through a clearing. The video's authenticity is still debated, with some thinking it was likely a hoax, with the ape like figure just a human wearing a costume. Despite this, it is seen as one of the most compelling photographic evidence of Bigfoot. It appears to document a female Bigfoot striding along a riverbank in Northern California, and it certainly wasn't human. Number 3. Suing the Government Over Bigfoot Todd Standing claims his first close encounter with Bigfoot was in 2005, and that it dramatically changed his life. The filmmaker and wilderness guide from Edmonton says he saw a 9 foot tall bipedal creature with a very human-like face high up in the Rocky Mountains of British Columbia. He says he saw it stand up and squat down. His video of the sighting, posted on YouTube, has more than 300,000 views, and he is suing the provincial government of BC in an effort to prove the existence of Bigfoot in court. He says that provincial wildlife officials are turning a blind eye to his findings. His lawsuit calls for a judge to declare that Sasquatch exists, and for a wildlife official to accompany him on a three-month hunt for one of the creatures. He said, I've seen Sasquatch so many times, I mean over 50 times. I filmed them eight different times. He claims fish and wildlife officials are deliberately ignoring his findings, which do not include any actual specimens, living or dead. They won't look into the evidence, so that's why he must go to court to prove it. Number 2. A Bigfoot Study A Bigfoot study called the Sasquatch Genome Project was led by genetic scientists. It was a five year study and took almost $500,000 to fund. The group followed a mother and daughter Bigfoot in Kentucky and they claim there's thousands of them in the USA. The group captured videos and photos as evidence, but they also acquired DNA. The DNA has given them a theory that this creature is a hybrid of human. The DNA was sent to UT Southwestern, New York University, and North Louisiana Crime Lab. There the results came back as human, but others did not. The scientists say whether you want to accept it or not, they have found proof that Sasquatch is a human relative that arose approximately 15,000 years ago as a hybrid cross of a modern Homo sapiens with an unknown primate species. The group called for this to be recognized officially, saying the government at all levels must recognize them as indigenous people and immediately protect their human and constitutional rights against those who would see in their physical and cultural differences a license to hunt, trap, or kill them. And number one, the FBI got involved. An Oregon man, intent on proving the existence of a mythical creature known as Bigfoot, Sasquatch, the Abominable Snowman, and Yeti, in 1976, managed to get the FBI to test hair and tissue samples that he believed might help his case, according to newly released records. The FBI has analyzed hair in connection with the search for Sasquatch, aka Bigfoot, an internal FBI memo noted in February 1977 said. The man who spurred the analysis, 93 year old Peter Bryan, told CNBC that he hadn't given up hope proving that Bigfoot is real, if exceedingly rare creature. FBI agent wrote back to Peter saying, we will examine the hairs and tissue mentioned in your letter. It was the first time that the FBI apparently tested a sample of hair to see if it was Bigfoot, according to the records, which contained photocopied images of the hairs. The FBI said the examination of the hair concluded a study of morphological characteristics such as root structure, meldorari structure, and cuticle thickness in addition to scale casts. Also, the hairs were compared directly with hairs of known origin under a comparison microscope. At the end of all that, it was concluded as a result of these examinations that the hairs are of deer family origin. The hair sample you submitted is being returned as enclosed in this letter it said. Was it really deer hair or were they covering up the fact that it actually was Bigfoot? The fact that they even tested the hair? is insane. Number 10. The Logging Company In 1958, Jerry Crew, a logging company bulldozer operator in Humboldt County, California, discovered a set of large 16-inch human-like footprints sunk deep within the mud in the Six Rivers National Forest. Upon informing his co-workers, many claimed to have seen similar tracks on previous job sites, as well as telling of odd incidents such as an oil drum weighing 450 pounds having been moved without explanation. 
Association, soon began to utilize the term Bigfoot to describe the mysterious culprit. Jerry, who initially believed someone was playing a prank on them, once again observed more of these numerous massive footprints and contacted a reporter. A plaster cast was made of the footprints and Jerry appeared holding one of the casts on the front page of a newspaper on October 6, 1958. With multiple people experiencing the same thing, it makes me question how it could not not be real. Number 9. One of the earliest sightings in Florida. In 1975 in Florida, Collier County, a family found some Bigfoot footprints. A family went hunting out on a boys trip and the man retelling the story was 13 years old at the time. He said, My family drove out to a secluded area of the Everglades, way out in the middle of nowhere. We tracked through waist high vegetation growth and when we reached a clearing and continued in a horizontal line towards a tree line approximately 100 yards away. We supposedly were hunting for rabbits but never saw one. As we approached the tree line we came upon a recently dried out water hole. Here is where I spotted the tracks. They were at least 17 inches in length. Two half prints and one full print in the mud going into the brush line. The brush on the other side was thrashed. I recall that we left the area not longer after it and it basically ended our trip. I feel like with what I know now it was a skunk ape. I swear on the bible on this experience. I clearly remember no sign of animal activity to include land or air. No birds. Weird for 7pm aka dusk in the Everglades. Six of us saw it but at the time none of us said anything. I remember it was 1975, only 8 years after the Patterson film. Number 8. California State In the United States, California is the state with the most reported Bigfoot sightings. So far there have been 461 reported sightings. This is a real story from January 2022. A family was hiking in Humboldt County on a local trail in Redcrest. They hiked this trail for 19 years and do it 3-4 to four times a week and they always go as a family. Their story goes, in the summer we hiked the trail nearly every day. We've never ever gotten the creeps in those woods. The last two hikes have really changed that. We were nearly done. On our way out when a loud, and I'm talking loud, yell scream guttural screech echoed through the woods. My family and I have grown up in redwoods, we've heard everything that nature has to offer in the way of animal sounds, but it wasn't a raven, a fox, a bear, a lion, a deer bleat, a chipmunk or a hawk. It sounded somewhat like a human, but the fact that it traveled through the woods so clearly and loud really shook all of us. Today, the sound was nothing we've ever heard before. It was loud and defined. It was just far enough in the distance for whatever it was to get its point across without making us petrified. It stopped my mother, me, and my son in our tracks. There was no doubt that we all heard the same thing. We got the feeling that we were being watched and that feeling didn't go away until we started driving off. Number 7. Bigfoot Body Two men, Matt Witten and Rick Dyer, claimed to have stumbled across a Bigfoot corpse in the woods northern of Georgia and they stood by their story at a news conference in Palo Alto during which they offered an email from an entomologist as evidence and said they have kept the body in a freezer for more than a month. Everyone who was talked down to us is going to eat their words, said Matt, an officer on medical leave from the Clayton County Police Department. Matt and Rick, a former corrections officer, announced the discovery on YouTube and their website. Although they didn't consider themselves devoted Bigfoot trackers before then, they have since started offering weekend search expeditions in Georgia for $499. The specimen they bagged, the men say, was one of several ape-like creatures they spotted cavorting the woods. Was it real or just a cash grab? Who knows, but finding the body of Bigfoot? Wow. <laughs> Number 6. The Footprint In Logan, Utah, Matthew Wentz came across a large footprint he thinks could have been made by a Sasquatch in the Bear River Range. He didn't see the creature, only found the print, but he took a photo of it. Matthew, who is 6 foot 3, explained that a mountain lion track is not much bigger than his palm, the black bear tracks he has seen are not any bigger than his hand, so that eliminates some comments of people saying it was possibly from a bear. He said, I wear size 12 shoe, and in comparison to that, there is no 
no bear that would make a print that big. I've looked up bear tracks and even the largest grizzly bear, this track is bigger. That track is in the 15 to 16 inch range which is pretty big. If you take a shoe size it would be bigger than a size 20. The width was 6 to 7 inches. I really believe there is some tall being out there but I have no idea what it is. It's hard to believe they would be around here because there are so many people and more going into the mountains these days compared to 30 or 40 years ago. People used to see stuff all the time. He also said, I have multiple friends that are older than me that have seen stuff around here. They're credible, but they don't talk about it. You know, when someone has seen something and it scares them, they don't really want to talk about it or be ridiculed. Number five, hitchhiking. To this day, there are still sightings in Florida, and in 2021, as a commuter was driving down US 1, they were driving south just after sunset, and there was one on the road beside him and another truck. While driving, he noticed something very large walking on the west side of US 1, walking north, approaching him. His best description of what he saw was a huge football player in shoulder padding, six to seven feet tall, wearing a long, shaggy fur coat. This happened in the summertime in Florida, so no human would dare wear one, it would be too hot. He said, I slowed down as I became level with what I saw and it had the head of an ape with a bump on its head. The fur was long and looked white, kind of like a dirty white shag carpet. As he drove past, the beast did not turn to look at him but kept looking straight ahead. It was out in the open and he thinks the other truck saw it too due to their driving actions, but that is just insane. Number four, the professor. Dr. Jeffrey Meldrum is a professor of autonomy and anthropology. He teaches at Idaho State University and his lab houses over 300 footprint casts from a mysterious North American primate. He said historical evidence for the existence of Bigfoot takes the form of Native American accounts of a wild man in the woods. Depictions are remarkably similar across tribes considering the differing regional circumstances and interpretations. As European settlers pressed westward into the wilderness, they too reported encounters with wild men, buggers, giant hairy apes, mountain devils, etc. As a student of human bipedalism, our adaptions for walking on two feet, the best contemporary evidence are footprints that corroborate these stories of wild men. Something is leaving oversized human-like footprints. They are either hoaxed, misidentified, or the trace of a real species. The distinctive anatomy, documented consistently over the past 70 years, is compelling evidence evidence of the latter. Number 3. Indigenous Cultures Many of the indigenous cultures across North America and continent include tales of mysterious hair covered creatures living in forests and legends that existed long before contemporary reports of Bigfoot. On the Tool River Indian Reservation in Central California, they believe in a group of Bigfoot called the Family. They called the largest of them hairy men and they are estimated to be between 500 and 1000 years old. Other tribes tell stories about Saskets, a shape-shifting creature that protects the forest. The name Sasquatch is the anglized version of Saskets, roughly translating to hairy man. Other tales from different tribes describe them as a nocturnal race and children were warned against saying the name so the monsters would not come and carry them off in the night. In 1847, natives talked about Skookums, a race of human-eating wild men living on the peak of Mount St. Helens in southern Washington state. Also related to this area was an alleged incident in 1924 in which a violent encounter between a group of gold prospectors and a group of ape men occurred. These allegations were reported in July 16, 1924. This has become a popular piece of Bigfoot lore with the area now being referred to as Ape Canyon. Number 2. The Reddit Bigfoot Hunter One Reddit user posted on the Ask Me Anything subreddit. They claim to have had countless interactions with Bigfoot and have done a lot of research. They list important things being number one. The most common misconception about Bigfoot is that there's only one of them. I and a vast majority of Bigfoot enthusiasts believe there exists self-perpetuating species of the bipedal ape residing in North America. Cousin species are likely the abominable snowman, yeti, and yaoi among others. Number two. As recently as 300,000 years ago, there exists skeletal evidence of a species of a massive ape called Gigantopithecus black. <laughs> Gigantopithecus. A massive ape called Gigantopithecus Blackie. Many Bigfoot enthusiasts believe these are ancestors of modern Bigfeet. 
Number three, there is an average of 400 reported sightings each year. Based on these reports, big feet can be characterized as follows. Walk upright, up to eight feet tall, covered in black, brown, red fur all over their bodies, except for the face, palms, and soles. Secrete a foul smell, nocturnal behavior, omnivorous diet, marked intelligence and senses of smell, vision, and hearing, extremely cautious behavior around humans. The most numerous examples of physical evidence are footprint casings. The Stride length heel to heel between prints is usually 4 to 5 feet, and the depth of the prints denotes the specimen weighing 600 to 700 pounds. Number 1. The President Believed US President Theodore Roosevelt, in his 1893 book The Wilderness Hunter, writes a story he was told by an elderly mountain man named Bowman, in which a foul-smelling, bipedal creature ransacked his beaver trapping camp, stalked him, and later became hostile when it fatally broke his companion's neck in the wilderness near the Idaho-Montana border. Roosevelt notes that Bowman appeared fearful while telling the story, but attributed the trapper's folkloric German ancestry to have potentially influenced him, but it seems like he believed him. A president believing in something like this? That's unheard of. It has to be true then. Number 10. How they live. In Washington state, a team of amateur Bigfoot researchers called the Olympic Project claimed to have discovered a collection of nests which belonged to Bigfoot. They had primatologists study them, with the conclusion being that they appear to have been created by a primate. There have been structures of broken and twisted foliage seemingly placed in specific areas, which have been attributed by some to Bigfoot behavior. In some reports, lodgepole pine and other small trees have been observed bent, uprooted, or stacked in patterns such as weaved and crisscrossed, leading to some to theorize that they are potential territorial markings. Some instances have included entire deer skeletons being suspended in high trees. Some Bigfoot researchers allege that Bigfoot throws rocks as territorial displays, in for communication and audible blows struck against trees or wood knocking. Number Number 9. Where the species came from Primatologist John R. Napier and anthropologist Gordon Strensenberg have suggested a species of Paranthropus as a possible candidate for the Bigfoot's identity, such as Paranthropus robotus with its gorilla-like crest skull and bipedal gait. Paranthropus is characterized by robust skulls with a prominent gorilla-like sagittal crest among the middle line, which suggests strong chewing muscles and broad herbivorous teeth used for grinding. Now, it's great that they believe this, but fossils of Paranthropius are found only in Africa, so it wouldn't really explain Bigfoot being in North America, but maybe it's something similar. Number 8. Research Doing scientific research, Steve Moon, who has three MFAs and a master's in anthropology, has studied Bigfoot for the past 10 years, and he claims to have had at least 12 sightings. If you want credibility to build these theories, if you want to test, you want to actually discover things, then you've got to follow that method," he said. His ultimate goal is to prove Bigfoot's existence so the species may be appreciated and preserved. We all know that he exists, but now we need to find a way for science to accept the data, he said. While on a trail in the forest, Steve mimicked a Bigfoot's howl and he could hear a response. It was recorded and the recorder picked up a faint animal-like sound after his howl. Though it is almost inaudible, there is something there. Steve said, I may have gotten a response. It's two seconds after my call ends. It's descending, followed by a percussive ascending note. If I were going to interpret this possible response, it sounds like a Sasquatch was offended by my call. Number seven. It's not just one species. Now, all around the world, people tell of mysterious beasts that are part human, part ape, typically large, hairy creatures that walk on two legs, but always seem to stay just out of sight. There isn't just a Bigfoot in North America, but there are other beasts as well. A yaoi is found in Australia, particularly in the eastern part of the continent. There have been over 3,000 distinct yaoi sightings that have been reported in the Blue Mountain area of west of Sydney. There's the Yeti, which is located in the Himalayas, which is also called the Abominable Snowman. The Orang Penic is located in central Sumatra, Indonesia. Orang Penic means a short person in Indonesian, 
which makes sense because it has a short stature and a human-like face. Local folklore says that these creatures walk with back pointing feet to confuse anyone trying to track them. And finally, a kimozit is located in East Central Kenyan forests. Some witnesses say that the kimozit looks like a hyena or a bear and call it a nandi bear after the Kenyan tribe that lives in its reported range. The nandi people, however, consider the creature to be an enormous, ferocious primate that enjoys eating the brains of its victims. If there are so many creatures like this around the world, they have to exist then. Right? Number six, the theory. There have been many studies surrounding Bigfoot, and one study was conducted by John Napier and published in his book Bigfoot, the Yeti, and Sasquatch in Myth and Reality in 1973. John wrote that if a conclusion is to be reached based on scant, exantant, hard evidence, science must declare Bigfoot does not exist. However, he found it difficult to entirely reject thousands of alleged tracks scattered over 125,000 square miles or to dismiss all the many hundreds of eyewitnesses accounts. John concluded, I'm convinced that Sasquatch exists, but whether it is all it's cracked up to be is another matter altogether. There must be something in the Northwest America that needs explaining, and that something leaves man-like footprints. Number five, recently spotted in Pennsylvania. The Bigfoot Field Organization, aka Beefro, has their own website filled with hundreds of stories of people spotting Bigfoot. On the website, a story was posted by a user saying, on October 5th, 2022, while my boyfriend and I were biking on the ghost town trails near Ambensburg, Pennsylvania, we saw a Bigfoot coming about 150 yards in front of us. He was walking along the trail towards us. We couldn't see his face, but when he saw us, he turned around quickly and walked into the woods. As we went by, we looked into the woods and didn't see anything. It was really shocking as there were no sounds or smells. As he was walking, you could see how big his stride was and there was a huge space between his legs. We thought this was a once in a lifetime thing and thought it was so cool. Yes, Bigfoot does exist. And just in case you think the Bifro just took a submitted report, the site reported that it did a follow up and spoke with the witnesses. It even names them on the site and they found their testimony to be credible. The investigator who put it all together, Matthew Moneymaker, who was mentioned in part one of the series. If you haven't seen part one and part two, check them out. Number four. Four, three photos of Bigfoot. A keen hunter once claimed to encounter Bigfoot and unveiled shocking photo proof to the world after setting up cameras outside his house. Craig Salk really loved hunting with his wife, and to increase the odds of their hunting success, Craig set up a number of trail cameras on his land. In 2012, one of his cameras snapped a mysterious figure that didn't appear to be animal or human. Luckily, Craig was a big fan of the show Finding Bigfoot on Animal Planet, and and he knew exactly what he had to do. He reached out to the TV channel and showed the producers the image captured on his cameras. Animal Planet was massively impressed by the fact that Craig had managed to get three snaps of the mysterious creature and filmed an episode with him. After the episode aired, Craig was suddenly a star and he was flooded with phone calls and visits from Americans who wanted to share their own bizarre paranormal experiences. Craig and his wife soon opened their land to the world to let anyone come out and examine the spot where Bigfoot was scene, take a look at the pictures, and judge for themselves. Number three, first sighting ever. David Thompson was a surveyor and trader who worked for the Hudson's Bay Company and the Northwest Company. He was considered one of North America's great pathfinders and surveyors as he traveled through Western North America between 1785 and 1812. Once he saw Bigfoot and wrote in his journal of his finding while in Alberta, Canada. He wrote, January 7th, 1811, continuing on our journey in the afternoon we came on the track of a large animal. The snow about six inches deep on the ice. I measured it, four large toes, each four inches in length, to each a short claw. The ball of the foot sunk three inches lower than the toes, the hinder part of the foot didn't mark well, the length 14 inches by eight inches in breadth, walking from north to south, and having passed about six hours. As the snow was about six inches in depth, the track was well defined, and we could see it for a full 100 yards from us. This animal was proceeding north to south. We did not attempt to follow it, we had no time for it, and the hunters, eager as they are to follow and shoot every animal, made no attempt to follow this beast, for what could the balls of our fouling guns do against such an animal? Number two, the Battle of Ape Canyon. The most successful launching pad for the public's obsession with Bigfoot is a battle that supposedly took place in a narrow gorge on the east flank of Mount St. Helens. The gorge is now called 
Ape Canyon. That's where, in the summer of 1924, a group of gold prospectors stumbled out of the woods shaking and glassy eyed to tell of a seven foot tall ape like animals attacking them with boulders. Fred Beck and four others described coming upon gorilla men near where they had built a small cabin. They saw four of the giant animals moving through the forest with erect, human like strides. They were covered with long black hair, their ears were about four inches long, and stuck straight up. They had four toes, short and stubby. The witnesses estimated each animal weighed around 400 pounds. Taken aback at the sight of the huge beasts, Fred fired his rifle at one of the creatures and struck three times, resulting in the wounded animal toppling off a cliff. This would be a mistake though, as that night the men were awakened when huge stones began hitting against their cabin. Then they heard and felt giant bodies slamming against the walls and door. The eight men were seeking revenge and eventually tore a hole in the roof, allowing them to target Fred. Many of the rocks fell through the hole in the roof and two of the rocks struck Fred, one of them rendering him unconscious for nearly two hours. Then when the sun began to come up, the animals broke off their attack and slipped away. The men then poked their heads out the door and when they decided the coast was clear, they ran out of the woods. And coming in at number one, Bigfoot kidnapping. In 1924, Albert Ostman, a lumberjack and woodsman, went on vacation in the woods. Albert had heard stories about the man beast who supposedly roamed these woods but refused to believe them. Then everything changed. One night when he was asleep, a Sasquatch picked him up and carried him off while he was in his sleeping bag. He was carried in a sleeping bag across the country for three hours by the Sasquatch. The Sasquatch then dropped Albert down on a plateau and standing around him was a family of four of the creatures, two adults and two children. Albert claims he was kept captive by them for six days. One of the Bigfoots was reported as being eight feet tall. Now, Albert had a gun, but he decided not to use it as they had done him no harm. He stayed with the Bigfoot family, stating he ate sweet tasting grass that they gave him and the female Sasquatch washed and stacked leaves. He escaped by making the large male Sasquatch groggy by feeding him some snuff. Albert did not tell his story for more than 24 years after it happened in fear of being thought of as crazy. But as more Sasquatch stories appeared in the press, Albert decided to tell his story. Number 10. Strange Sounds A Bigfoot sighting became a federal investigation when a man fired his weapon inside a national park in Kentucky. Brad Ginn told news outlets he and his girlfriend were camping nearby and were awakened at about 1am by a man with his son. We got out of the tent and saw a man who told us their campsite had been destroyed by someone or something. The man who was with his young son showed them his weapon on his hip and told him the area was popular for Bigfoot sightings. The couple climbed back into their tent as the man walked away to investigate with his son in tow. We heard them coming back about 10 minutes later. We heard them yelling, I see it! Brad said. We saw a flash from his weapon and he shot maybe 20 yards from the side of our tent into the pitch black darkness. After this, Brad and his girlfriend decided to leave and report the incident, which was the smart thing to do. A park spokeswoman, Molly Schwar, said there was an investigation and that the park was safe to visit. The statement did not confirm a Bigfoot sighting, but Molly said that no threat remains in the park. Federal regulations prohibit the discharge of a firearm in the national park and park officials know the identity of the person who allegedly fired the weapon, but no charges had been filed. Number 9 thrown logs. In 2015, a pair of Bigfoot hunters were hot on the trail of a Bigfoot outside Houston, Texas. While following the beast, they realized the creature was unhappy with their presence. As they began their overnight hunt, the lead investigator realized that something was throwing full-sized logs at them from the tree line. That's according to Wes Germer, host of the Sasquatch Chronicle podcast, whose team ventured into the East Texas Piney Woods. In the early night, the noise came. We heard the this thing crashed through the bush, and then we heard this thing start crashing, just crash, 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 and you can hear it walking, and you can hear it breaking branches as it's going. Then the giant bolted off and plowed fiercely through the dense brush with astonishing speed. This thing moved so fast, it probably covered 100, 150 yards like nothing. As we neared the spot where we heard the beast lurking, a noise grew and I knew what it was. It was a log coming, and it was a big log, and you could hear 
hear it being thrown. And I ducked down because I thought for sure it was going to hit us, but it hit the tree right in front of us, and I just couldn't believe what was happening. Wes says it was a warning and that it wasn't the only time Sasquatch has thrown logs at unwelcomed intruders. Number eight. New footprint. In March 2022, in Big Sur, California, a hiker spotted a very large footprint. They took a picture of it next to their own foot for perspective and shared it on Reddit's Bigfoot page, where commenters discussed if they felt the print belonged to a Sasquatch or if it was nothing. And there were plenty of believers. One person wrote, This is the first imprint I have seen that isn't clearly a bear. Good find. While another stated, I wish the print was more fresh, but it really does look more like a Bigfoot track, and a third chimed in, what a solid print. Someone else added, definitely Sasquatch, the upper foot impressions is relative to the lower width and diameter of depth. I'd reach out to the Loco Bresto Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization in your area ASAP. Now it honestly does look huge, and to me, you can even see the toe prints, seems pretty convincing to me. <laughs> Number 7. Bigfoot Eats Hogs East Texas is the home to many reported sightings of Bigfoot, including one particular encounter from a hunter in Panola County. The witness claims that while he was hog hunting, he watched a Sasquatch leap out of the woods and grabbed one of the hogs. The report states that the Bigfoot began making a loud whooping noises, which were met with more howls from somewhere off in the distance. Before walking back into the woods, the creature stared directly at the hunter and growled. Seemed like the hunter got a little too close to Bigfoot territory. Now those whooping sounds would definitely creep me out, especially if there were more coming from the forest. Ugh. Number 6. Face to Face One of the three Midland County Bigfoot encounters documented details of a witness discovering an ape-like creature on the first day of hunting season in 1997. The witness claims to have seen the legendary creature on November 15th, 1997 while driving in a wooded area near Coleman on Coleman. Road, about six miles north of M20. They said, I was driving north around 645 and saw a creature coming out of the ditch. The report describes the creature as having a flat, ape like face and hair on its arms and head. The witness claims to have come within 10 feet of the creature when it looked at the witness. As the witness got closer to the beast, it made eye contact with him before disappearing into the trees, and that is terrifying. Number five. Bigfoot likes children. This user tells a story of seeing Bigfoot as a child. They said, I've had two separate sightings here in central Alabama, once when I was about five and another when I was 19. The first one, I was at my Nana's house playing outside in a treehouse my dad and pa built for me and I looked off into the woods and saw a large light brown bipedal creature standing there watching me. So I ran inside to get my Nana and when we came back out to the treehouse, it was gone. The second time, me and my wife were coming back from a buddy's house real late at night and I saw something large cross on two legs in front of a yellow road sign up ahead. These signs were about 10 feet tall and this thing covered the whole sign when I walked in front of it. Now, many people believe that Bigfoot likes children. While many don't think they actually eat children, they think they might try to kidnap them to keep as pets. As they like to watch kids for the same reason people like to watch kittens or puppies playing and there's a similar urge to take one home with them. Number 4. Falling Bigfoot Bigfoot has been reportedly spotted in Colorado more than a hundred times in recent years, including one notable daylight spotting that occurred in Summit County, Colorado. In the summer of 2019, a daytime hiker was taking a break near an old log cabin in the area of Mayflower Gulch near Frisco when he spotted something strange at about 11,000 feet of elevation. He reported seeing a large bipedal creature attempting and failing to climb a 20 foot high snow wall. After the failed attempt at scaling the barrier, the creature moved on and out of sight. The hiker was joined by two others and they searched the area. During this search, the group was able to locate prints in the snow, including large handprints and footprints. That being said, they were unable to again locate the actual creature. The report prompted Bigfoot Field Research Organization investigator Scott Miles to further look into the report. Scott decided to meet up with the witness at the site of the spotting. At the scene, the witness was able to recount the sighting in a manner consistent with the initial report, pointing out exactly landmarks involved in his story. After deeper analysis of the witness's account, Scott said, I believe that the witness saw exactly what he reported and was witness to a Sasquatch, probably a young individual that accidentally or naively got caught in a compromising situation in the daytime in a fairly high traffic area. Number 3. 
in the swamp. In 2015, two men canoeing in Tampa, Florida swamp were expecting to see an alligator when they heard rustling on the bank. They soon realized that the creature they were watching was no alligator. One of the men said, initially it was exciting, it was like, oh, is that a bear? That's pretty cool. But when we moved closer, it started to look less and less like a bear. In that moment, I was looking at it and getting a little bit freaked out, especially once it started really moving. You could tell that he was slapping the water and it looked like maybe he was grabbing something. At the time, I was thinking, holy what the hell is this? By the time it walked off, my buddy was just like, let's go, let's go now. The friend moved one of the canoe paddles making a noise, which seemed to catch the attention of the hairy individual in the swamp. I don't know if it was a coincidence that it started moving because of the noise, but it seemed to know that we were there. He said his friend was so shaken by the experience that he won't talk about it. Number two his face. This user describes what they saw when they came face to face with Bigfoot. They saw the beast in early spring 1994 or 95 in Salt Fork State Park in Ohio, Hazak's Cave. I hope I said that right. <laughs> he said, the one I saw had black sclera, the white part of her eyes, and cheek pads like a male orangutan. It was not a man in a suit. It threw rocks at me as I hiked a path towards a small waterfall and I was a little confused but oblivious. The last rock was bigger and hit me in the calf and hurt. I spun around quickly towards the direction it came from yelling, that really hurt, thinking it was somebody messing with me, and saw a head from the eyes looking up over a fallen tree or ridge maybe 15 feet away. It looked like an orangutan wearing a ghillie suit. I looked in the eyes for maybe 5 seconds trying to comprehend what I was looking at. Golden brown eyes with black sclera and cheek pads like a male orangutan. It didn't look malicious really, had more of an okay, you got the point look. It casually turned its eyes away and ducked back behind the tree or ridge. Then I realized what I saw and got back to my car. All I could think was that because of his cheek pads, he was the dominant male of the troop. They must have been at the water source that I was hiking towards and he was keeping me from getting closer. I was maybe three quarters of the way there but the smaller rock started at about the halfway point and got gradually bigger until I caught on. I told my brother and best friend and they didn't believe me so I dropped or suppressed it for 20 years. I didn't think of it again until I saw a Bigfoot toy and thought they got the face wrong. And coming in at number one is the traffic cam sighting. A Washington Department of Transportation traffic camera near Sherman Pass captured Bigfoot standing in the snow in January 2020. At least one person at the Washington State Department of Transportation seems to think they saw Bigfoot after tweeting out some puzzling images captured by one of the department's webcams. Sasquatch spotted, the department East Twitter account tweeted, along with three circled and zoomed in photos. I'm not superstitious, just a little stitious. The employee points out that there appears to be something in the bottom left part of the frame. It looks like a person shaped figure silhouetted against Against an evergreen tree. Might be Sasquatch, we will leave that up to you, the tweet said. The tweet also says that the photos were captured on State Road 20 Sherman Pass, a route that winds its way through the forested Cascade Mountains in the northeastern part of the state. The spot is about 70 kilometers south of the Canada US border in Grand Forks, BC. Honestly, I think it could be Bigfoot. It looks convincing. Mm -hmm.